Today at EduTech, we're interviewing Dr. Jennifer Buckingham, one of Australia's senior authorities on reading instruction. Dr. Buckingham is a senior research fellow at the Centre for Independent Studies and head of Five from Five Reading Project, which aims to have effective reading instruction in every classroom every day. Dr. Buckingham, what do you think are some of the most harmful misconceptions about reading instruction and why? I'll just pick out two. So the first one I think is, is harmful, not just to children, but also it's very harmful to parents and, and their confidence in raising children who can read is the idea that children will just naturally learn to read by being read to mm -hmm. and by being exposed to lots of lovely books, um, being talked to a lot, being exposed to print in different ways. And for many children, that's not the case. Small number of children will somehow or other work out the, the basics of the reading system by being exposed to lots of books, but the majority need to have really great methodical and expert teaching. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I think is harmful is that quite often those of us who um, promote uh, an evidence-based and cognitive science uh, informed approach to reading instruction uh, are accused of uh, saying that phonics is all that children need to learn how to read. So that's a straw man and a very harmful straw man because every time you see something about phonics or decoding words, um, there are some people who just switch off and won't listen anymore. And there is not one single person I know within the reading research community who would say that phonics is all children need to learn how to read. It's one of at least five essential components. Oh, it is developmental though, isn't it? Um, do they start with phonics? Lead on to, uh, yes and no. So in the very early stages of reading, it's helpful for children to learn the very basics of phonics, but at the same time, so it's not an either or. Mm -hmm. So within a, a good comprehensive literacy program, even on the first day of school, you want children to be learning about the alphabetic code and how the words that they can hear or the sounds they can hear in, in the things that they say are represented by the print on the page and they learn that that's a system, that's a code for, for um, the he things they can hear in speech but also you want them to be developing their vocabulary by you know reading all those wonderful books, talking about things, talking about the meanings of words, words that sound the same but look different, words that look the same but sound different, all those kinds of really rich language experiences. But there are certain sub-skills that need to be focused on in those early stages if children are going to be able to start to read independently as quickly as possible. In, in broad strokes, how does reading develop in the mind? I know this is one of your, your areas. Yes, so we know now from a few decades of cognitive science research that uh, the, for beginning readers, they need to learn to make the connections between the, the letters and the words that they can see on the page and the sound that that represents before it connects to the meaning. So the alphabetic code that we use to write words in English is connected to the sound. So you can't tell what a word is if you don't know what, what that word sounds like when you say it you will find it difficult to work out what the meaning of the word is. So for beginning readers, they need to learn via what we call the phonological route. So from visual, the word on the page, through to what it sounds like, and then they connect the sound of that word to the meaning of the word that they know. As children become more and more accurate and proficient, uh, they don't need to sound the word out anymore. They can remember it. They've got it stored in their mind as a sight word. So they can go almost immediately yeah. from visual to meaning. But that takes time, and that's a process called orthographic mapping. And that um, is through repeated exposure to the same word, uh, and that becomes then imprinted in the memory. Okay. Uh, you recently wrote an article stating that one of the popular uh, programs for reading, reading recovery, has no real sound evidence base. Despite that lack of hard data, does its approach to reading have any merit? There are elements of the reading recovery program that are fine. I mean, reading recovery was developed uh, 40 years ago <laughs> using what research people had at the time. Unfortunately, it has not caught up with the science of reading as we know now. So of course, you know, there are parts of it that still work um, and on a one-to-one -one basis, um, for some children who are just needing a little bit of support, any kind of one-on-one -on -one, um, intensive reading support is going to be helpful to them. However, for children who really struggle with reading, with the mechanics of reading, those sub-skills, um, committing uh, to memory, the letter-sound relationships and how they work, uh, how language works, reading recovery is not as explicit and methodical enough for those children. 
So it's really for those um, children who are really struggling, their reading recovery is, is not as effective as it should be. However, that they're the children that reading recovery targets. So we've got a mismatch okay. <laughs> between uh, a program and, it, and its, its purpose. It has been summarised and explained in a way that makes it sound as though reading recovery is more effective than it is. I recently looked at a study that was published in the UK that was a 10-year longitudinal study that supposedly showed that reading recovery was hugely effective, even 10 years after children have done it. Um, when I looked at that data set, I discovered that there were subgroups of children who had been excluded from that analysis. Uh, when those subgroups of children were brought back into the analysis, it was nowhere near as effective as the study that had been published suggested that it was. How is Australia tracking and reading instruction vis-a-vis -vis other countries in the world? What do you think we need to do better? Australia uh, is not doing well by international standards in terms of reading performance. Um, and so by virtue of that fact, we assume therefore reading instruction is not as good as it could be. So children in other English speaking countries are doing better than Australia in international assessments of reading, particularly in the PEARLS test, which is at year four. So we are second last in terms of English speaking countries and in terms of the number of children or really the proportion of children who are below the international benchmark. Only New Zealand does worse than us. Oh, okay. Which is the home of reading recovery, not uh, coincidentally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, we could be doing a lot better. There are English-speaking countries that are doing better than us and I um, particularly think it's relevant to compare Australia to English-speaking countries because English is a very difficult language to master the writing system, the writing and spelling system and therefore the reading system. So comparing ourselves with languages such as um, Finnish or Italian or Spanish in countries where they're spoken, that's a much simpler language in terms of learning to read and write. So the, um, the languages themselves are in some ways complex, but the orthography, so that relationship between letters and sounds and being able to break down into code words is much simpler in those um, languages. And so um, we need to look at what are other English speaking countries doing to make it easier for children to learn to read. And they are adopting much more explicit, systematic, methodical approaches than we typically use in Australian classrooms. Yeah. Around the, the, that phonological teaching, is that, is that what they're doing? Yes. Yeah, so, um, Partly that, but also the um, effectiveness of explicit instruction isn't confined just to phonics yeah. and phonemic awareness. Um, there's a lot of evidence to suggest that explicit teaching for vocabulary and comprehension is also really effective. So um, by explicit teaching, I mean um, identifying a, a methodical approach to, to teaching that ensures that children are making progress. It breaks down the skills that they need to learn, the knowledge that they need to learn, uh, and not um, assuming that they'll be able to work it out implicitly just by exposure and by discussion. Really breaking it down and explaining um, the structures um, that, that are beneath the way that we read and write in English, which aren't necessarily well known by a lot of teachers, uh, and that then creates another problem, of course. Would. Dr. Jennifer Buckingham, thank you for speaking with Care uh, Education Review. My pleasure, thank you. Thank you.